Welcome to Wednesday Walks Together. My name is Mark Long, Rector of the Parish of St. Andrew in Newlands, Cape Town. One of the things or aspects of our social, economic, political, uh, relational environment that we've been grappling with for some time is the issue of violence. Um, in the Western Cape, uh, one of the long-running issues has been the gang violence in the Cape Flats communities um, and the huge levels of, dis of destruction that that brings on community life. Uh, about 12 months ago, we were, the whole issue of gender-based violence was just raised and, and both as church and I think as society realizing that we really need to deal with gender-based violence. Um, when we look at crime in this country, um, so much of it is violent, um, farm murders, uh, the, the levels of almost torture that seem to go on in that context. Um, it just seems to be intrinsic to who we are as South Africans. And that needs to clearly be unacceptable. And if it's going to be unacceptable, we, we have to find ways to address it. And uh, <laughs> that's obviously a, a very broad, um, a very broad response to that. And, and clearly we, we're struggling to find the answers, uh, be, it, be it in terms of government, be it in terms of communities. It strikes me though that as people of faith and for myself from a Christian perspective, um, my, my faith environment uh, needs to address violence. And uh, I found myself this last Sunday uh, preaching on the parable of the uh, wedding feast in Matthew 22, 1 to 14, um, just finding that I needed to try and see if there was some way to, to actually grapple with the violence in that parable. Um, and I've, I've never been satisfied by the manner in which the more orthodox or traditional interpretations of, of this parable uh, do that. Um, and so I kind of turned it on its head a bit and, and looked at ways forward. And um, <laughs> I, I suspect that I probably haven't tied it up very well. And it's probably conflicts with, with passages before and after and all sorts of other things. Um, there are others probably better versed in, in terms of that aspect of theology. But for me, from a more practical or contextual perspective, um, there's, there's violence in this parable. And we need to understand what that violence is about. And we also need to, in, in trying to understand what it's about, understand how violence is always become. Um, so tied up in, in things like our scriptures. Um, and obviously, I think the Bible, uh, in many ways, written by people reflecting on their own lives and, and human life has always had a strong violent aspect to it. And you can trace that through from Genesis, I think, through to Revelation. Um, all you have to do is read your, your, your news for the day, and it's, it's there now, too. Um, but there's a, a real need for us to, to not gloss over um, violence and, and in interpretations of scripture that, that somehow connect this violence to God, we, we need to be very careful what, what we're saying um, if we allow that to happen. And the more orthodox view here, um, where the king is seen to be God, um, there's then a whole lot of violence that we're attaching to, to an image of God. And admittedly, this is a parable, it's a story. Um, it's, it's full of imagery that's wanting to get us thinking and reflecting. Um, and part of my reflection, having read the parable a few times, was that actually, I can't live with the violence that is there. Um, that I can't live with it, particularly as violence that is, is kind of attached to the image there of God. And a king who, who sends out his messengers uh, with invitations, uh, has those messengers killed. Uh, yeah, that's horrific. Um, his response, uh, a vengeful response to go out and, and, and have those people themselves killed by, by his forces. Um, that also doesn't, doesn't work for me. Uh, as we grapple with, say, gang violence in the Western Cape, um, so much of gang violence revol revolves around revenge killings. You just, you just never end. It's just a continuous cycle. Um, and so, yes, the parable touches on that continuous cycle. And yes, that is what human beings seem to get into and are about. 
Um, but is that what God is about? And, and that we need to think through very carefully. Um, and so when I uh, addressed it, I kind of turned the parable on its head and, and sought to find different ways of looking at the violence that was there and, and who in fact the perpetrators of that violence uh, may have been. And so I would, I'm, what I'm wanting us to do is just to start really thinking, <laughs> um, you know, be it passages like this that attribute violence in some form to God and our interpretations in one way or another, do they, or well, maybe they don't. I, I am happy to have that conversation. Um, but, but what do they say about God's attitude to violence? Um, and as we grapple with God's attitude to violence, that obviously seeps down into, into how we respond. Um, and one of the huge challenges of Christian and Jewish scriptures is there is a lot of violence in them. And the temptation is for us, because it's there and because God seems to be involved in some of it, to kind of say, well, that's acceptable. We can, we can, we can be about life in that kind of way. But I would, I, would want to, I would want to challenge that. I would want us to, to really grapple with what it is to be a people of love um, and, and to move forward in, in ways that really become creative in living together, despite all the challenges that exist. Um, and I'm aware in the South African context, I say that from, from, from a level of, of real privilege. Um, I'm not grappling with some of the, the more difficult um, social spaces that many of my fellow South Africans uh, have, to, have to deal with and grapple with on a, on a daily, uh, even hourly basis. But if we're going to address the need in our society as people of faith, then our, our doctrines, our teachings, our thinking, our theology um, needs to really hold us in that process. We, we need to have an insight into, into scripture that really enables us to be creative in those responses. And so, and, and then to, to be able to, to really challenge violence, be it gender-based, be it criminal, uh, be it gang-based, um, be it something that's, that's just intrinsically part of our, our whole, econ whole economic and political environment as well, and, and be about the, the work of God. And uh, yeah, let's, let's re-look at scripture, let's re-look at our own lives, let's, let's be conscious of of what we're saying when we say it and, and how we're saying it. Um, and particularly when it comes to, to elements of, of violence connected with the scriptures that we're grappling with and ensure that we're not um, unconsciously backing up um, the, the horrendous ability of human beings to be violent towards each other, but actually find ourselves speaking and living in ways that really do encourage goodness of life, uh, wholeness of life, uh, a deep respect for our humanity and for one another.